two broke rednecks present. If Lowell Thomas is anything like Lowell Mathers, this should be an interesting film. Unlike the self-service studios who do nothing. We want a Star Wars scrolling opening, but done by a drunk. If there is one thing we are all interested in... It is if I'm wearing you. pants. More than anything else, we want to know how we are going to get on. So the future's like a bus? Build better homes. Have higher standards of living. And a mistress we can afford. Our grandfathers never dreamed of the progress which American industry has achieved in recent years. By ignoring safety practices. Progress? What makes this American system of ours tick? A clock? Well, when we look at a big plant like this, it all looks pretty complicated. But the truth is, there is a pattern of progress, and it's just as simple as ABC. So progress is like I the alphabet? You'd find the secret in a little mill like this, would you? But let's turn back the clock a hundred years or so. And, and watch my grandpa being conceived. About a century ago, a miller and his helper sat at a rough board table in the gathering dusk. Unaware that candle was going to kill them all. Grinding slowly away to produce about ten bushels of wheat. Someday, John, I'll have a big house with two rooms. His dream is One to have a two-holer outhouse. And another for sleeping. And you, you will have a warm cabin of your own. Instead of sleeping in that ditch. Perhaps even a bed with a real cotton mattress. Until then, you can keep sleeping in my random shit pile. How can we? Today we ground ten bushels. Farmer's share is nine bushels. Then the tax man wants one bushel. In better mill, we could grind more and finer flour. I don't like that shit we turn out now. More people could pay and make more profits. But are people willing to pay for grain husk underwear? A larger wheel to turn, not one stone, and the little wheel we have here. He has wheel envy. We some money for a bigger mill. Mr. Scott and Mr. Burton have some money. Let's rob them. There are other of our neighbors who, like them, have some savings. We shall ask them to put in their savings. Then laugh when they want to return. We can build a larger mill. With strippers and a bar. Mr. Burton to put in their money. What can we offer them? Your ass, my young friend. We'll give them a share in the mill. With the bigger mill, we can grind so much more fine flour. There'll be more for all of us to share. Except you. We'll be better off. And so the new mill was built. And, and it sucked. Wheat on shares for the farmers. The new mill bought and paid for all the wheat and sold all the flour. Granted, the meth lab in the back helped bring in money. But many, many bushels. Out of each ten bushels... Here we see the number of flower sacks needed to make your mom's underwear. ...received one quarter of a bushel. Mr. Scott, Mr. Burton, and the other investors received two bushels. And John and his helpers, for it was now a larger mill, divided the other seven and three-quarter bushels. So the miller doesn't make crap! That the money partners, that is the investors, began putting part of their share back in the business. Because they like strippers and meth. More jobs were made, more grain was ground, and the company grew bigger and stronger. And thus the miller had more money also. So he, he bought a brothel. Four rooms and a buggy to ride in. He worked only from daylight to dusk. And he finally learned his children's names. And even meat on his table twice a week. Too bad it was rancid. For John, his helper, he had a house with two rooms, good food, and yes, a Sunday suit. But the other helper still slept in the random shit pile. No one had to work quite so hard anymore because there was a newfangled thing called automatic machinery coming into use. Which replaced them all. In a 12 hour day, a man could produce enough flour to have all day Sunday to himself. But it didn't because the miller found you could make more with a seven day a week operation. Then John grew old too. And became a priest. 
Machinery did many of the hard jobs now, and the lowliest helper, because he could produce more with a machine than with his two hands, lived better and had far more leisure than the old miller himself ever enjoyed. Because he had been replaced by a machine. So did the farmers. Instead of selling 10 or 100 bushels of grain to the mill, they sold 1,000 or 10,000. And with the money they got from selling more wheat, they began to buy more of the products of industry. But then and found the they could make more by. sell into the brewer. Sons, sons and his helpers' sons and the sons of the money partners and many newcomers carried on the business. There was a new now called a horseless carriage. And moonshine. The now the head miller had one. And here and there, a miller's helper could be heard to say that he expected to own one someday. Then came a day when depression stalked the land. Then, then why the not give the land Prozac? Many foolish things, but made equally foolish statements. What we do with these what films? They cried, the system is all wrong. Let's remake America. With now, blackjack and hookers. This was in 1907. We had just but invented all rain. All the human weaknesses of 1907, progress kept on. And thus the it made all those naysayers its bitch. Cars to work and owned radio sets. And in the passing crowds, it became impossible to distinguish between the man who worked in the mill and the miller himself. Because the miller and likes overalls. Step by step, as the mill prospered, the farmers got more money. Until they, like the miller and his helpers, could buy automobiles and radios and electric lights and the other conveniences to make farm life easier and happier. What do refrigerators and vacuum cleaners have to do with farming? job gives him more and better tools to work with. And the resources of science and industry working together... So the mill not only makes flour, but shoes too. ...and thus earn more. No wonder the American workman has become the highest paid in the world. Take that, you commies! Time. No wonder, too, that we consumers have benefited through the production of continually better goods at lower prices. Is yes, this guy a spokesman for Walmart? Sometimes you and I aren't fully aware of the vast industrial progress in which we take part. We're aware, but just That's don't care. This is the latest and snappiest 1914 model. A bargain, too, at $5,200. Which explains why my great grandmother walked everywhere. Cars at an average cost of around seven hundred dollars. I wish. And the result: twenty-four times as many passenger cars were owned in America last year as in 1914. Cause they're cheap That's as hell. Well. When they make a better product at a price more people can pay. Here is the family's pride and joy in 1924: a radio set, which cost picked up two stations. And today, a set far better than that one can be bought for as little as $20. Which, oddly enough, is about how much they cost in the 21st century. Today. And what is true in these industries has been repeated in almost every one. Too much country. magic bus! ...that more comforts and luxuries are steadily being made available to more people. And so, this is the pattern of American progress. Next, we'll show you how sleazy I am. Workers, ...management, and money partners striving together to produce a better product at a price more people can pay. Even hookers are doing it. All of us can have more of the good things of life. Higher standards of living. Well, we have progressed to the end of this piece of crap. Thank God. Two Park Rednecks. We don't make bad movies. We make bad movies better.